Hey, what's going on guys? Coming again Z here. In this video, we're going to learn about how the logic OR gate works. So you can think of logic OR gates uh, as the hardware allowing to evaluate the following expression. So let's say 0 bitwise OR with 0 is going to be 0. 0 bitwise OR with 1 is going to be 1. 1 bitwise OR with 0 is going to be 1. And obviously 1 bitwise OR with 1 is also going to be 1. But how this works on a circuit level? So let's consider the following circuit. We've got a power supply here, a lamp, and two switches, switch A and B. Now, what's going to happen in this particular case if both switches are turned off? Well, lamp is not going to light up, obviously, because the current is not going to be flowing through, so we get an open circuit. But if we turn on uh, either of uh, the switches, so if we turn on the switch A or if we, t if we turn on the switch B, then light is going to light up because the current would be flowing like this or like this respectively. And even if we turn on both switches, still the uh, current is going to flow through the switches and the light eventually is going to light up. And this is represented in the so-called truth table that we have here on the left. So a zero represents uh, the open state of uh, the switch and one represents the closed state uh, of the switch, right? So if we have both switches open, uh, we have zero as a result, Q just stands for a result, and this means that the light is not going to light up. And then if we have uh, either switch B or switch A being closed or turned on, in this case we have the lamp uh, in the state where it lights up right and obviously if we have both switches being turned on still the same result the light is going to uh, light up now to build this on the real hardware we need to pick up one and i'm going to be using 74 hc32 integrated circuit and this is the quad 2 input or gate so what this means uh this means that we have uh, up to four or gates being bundled into the single chip into the single integrated circuit and uh, each of the OR gates uh, contains up to two inputs. And by the way, there might be more than two inputs, but for simplicity, we're going to be considering only two inputs, right? And if we scroll down a little bit here, uh, we have the functional diagram uh, showing something that uh, we've just seen on uh, the previous slide. So here we have uh, the representation of the logic or elements, which work exactly the same as has been shown uh, previously. So here we can apply 5 volts to input A and uh, 5 volts to input B. And in this case, in the output, we'll have 5 volts. And if we only apply 5 volts here and 0 volts here, here still we're going to have 5 volts. But if we apply 0 volts here and 0 volts here, then here at the output we're going to be having 0 volts. So uh, this logical element does exactly the same what we've just had a look at, but not on the mechanical level, but on a uh, kind of digital level. All right, so uh, here is the pinout for a chip and uh, we have the power uh, pin 14 is the power and pin 7 is the ground and then we have just uh, input like uh, with so this 1 1 1 2 2 2 so 1 is like uh, logic or gate 1 all the 2's are logic uh, or gate 2 logic or gate 3 and logic or gate 4 so uh, we have two inputs for every logic game and we have one output so let's have a look how this works uh, on a circuit simulation all right, so here is the circuit simulation I built in order to demonstrate how logic OR gate works on a real circuit. So we got this 74HC32 chip that we've just uh, been looking uh, the data sheet off. So um, we have the power pin being connected to plus 5 volts and the ground pin to minus 5 volts or to the ground in this case. And uh, here is the logic OR gate 1, logic OR gate 2. Uh, logic or gate 3 and logic or gate 4. Now uh, the output pins are connected uh, to the LEDs and then I'm using the resistors in order to just avoid burning the LEDs and the green wires actually do represent the input signals to the logic or gate. So depending on the combination of this uh, input signals uh, we might have a different output. So let's have a look how this works. So if I just click the start simulation button we see all the LEDs has been turned on and that's because uh, 
one uh, bitwise ORT with one would result in one, right? So here is the truth table uh, cheat sheet that uh, I just brought from the previous slides. So just to give you a better idea of how this works. So uh, if we uh, say remove uh, this input A or input B, uh, nothing's gonna change. So let's just have a look at how this works. So I just remove the single input here, but the LED still uh, lights up, right? Because uh, this, so this is B, so B is equal to one, uh, A is equal to zero, and this results in one. So LED lights up, right? And on the other hand, if let's say we get rid of this one, I'm gonna have exactly the same result because still like uh, one bitwise ORT with like uh, zero is gonna be uh, one. So still we have this LED being turned on. However, if we get rid of both inputs, only in this case would be uh, having the zero. And this is how it works. So now this LED is no longer being turned on. Okay, now let's build a logic OR gate absolutely from scratch in Tinkercad just to make sure that we do properly understand how it works. So I want to start by adding the breadboard and I'm using this breadboard small, right? And it's a little bit laggy, but it's okay. And then we need the power supply. So power supply can be found within the instruments. Okay, so add the power supply here. We can nicely centralize things here. Now let's connect um, uh, the power supply to the breadboard, right? And the plus five volts and the minus five volts, we can give a custom colors to the wires to easier distinguish uh, between them. And let's forward plus five volts up here so we can power up our chip okay and now uh we need to start searching for the logic elements and we need the quad or gate and here is the chip so quad quad or gate let's bring one right over in here now uh the power should be connected to plus five volts so from here I just make this little jumper right and then the ground should be connected to minus five volts so let's make this wire black right so currently uh, the chip is uh should be powered up now uh let's get back to the basic components and pick up an led so uh, i just put it somewhere here and now we need the output pin of the logic or gate one and connect the anode of the led with the pin uh, uh, with the output one of the logic uh, or gate one and let's make it gray so it feels like uh, it's the pin of the LED right now also we need a resistor and uh, I just want to uh, have a 220 ohms resistor right and uh, put it to zero and then connect this with the cathode and make it a little bit more cute like this so currently uh we uh, we actually can start the simulation now but as far as the inputs to it uh, to input one to input a and to input b are equal to zero volts or logical zero for both inputs uh hence we have this led kind of being turned off however uh if we start adding the uh inputs so from plus five volts and to input A, for instance. Now it should be enough to turn on the LED because uh, one uh, bitwise OR with one is gonna be, uh, sorry, one bitwise OR with a zero is gonna be one. So should now light up, all right? And the same is gonna happen if we enable the input two, all right? And obviously if we use both uh, inputs, uh, like five volts to both of them, but still we'll have this LED being lighted up. Like, okay, so this is it from my side. So I hope you learned something interesting about how the logic or gate works and how to build one. And this is it from my side. Thanks for watching until the next time and take care.